lawyer's profession is the only profession which finds a place in the constitution of India. Though Article 19 of the Constitution guarantees a fundamental right to practice any profession, trade, calling, business, occupation, the only profession which long ago Cicero, a Roman lawyer, and a philosopher boasted of justifiably as the noble profession. No other profession finds a place in the whole of the constitutional literature. As all of you know, the constitution itself was a product of a group of eminent lawyers, thinkers, and philosophers who were the drafting committee headed by Dr. Ambedkar. If you see the constituent assembly debates, the whole constitution appears to have sprung from the most fertile brain of this committee and the committee consisted of Dr. Ambedkar as the chairman, Allah D. Krishna Swami Ayer, Gopala Krishna Swami Ayengar, T. T. Krishnamachari, Rajkumari Amrut Kaur and Kichalu. They were the members of the drafting committee. All were the lawyers. And there was constitutional advisor, Benagal Narasingarao from Karnataka, near Bangalore. He was the constitutional advisor to the Constituent Assembly, which started functioning from 9-12-1946 before independence was gained, both for India and then Pakistan. The great men who coined our constitution were lawyers. Lawyers of great intellectual height and unimpeachable character, highly knowledgeable. So, they were hardworking also, very, very dedicated. They did not accept remuneration. See this. They did not accept remuneration. See the Constituent Assembly, which was formed in 1779, uh, 76 in the US. They were paid, they were receiving the remuneration for hours of work. George Washington came from 100 kilometers. Jonathan came from over 300 kilometers. Franklin came from nearly 700 kilometers. John Adam, the second president of US, he came from 1,500 kilometers. They together sat and framed the US Constitution. Johnson was also a member of that committee. He had 55 slaves at home. 
but he enacts a provision which prohibits slavery. But slaves continue there. This dichotomy you will not find in the members of the Constituent Assembly. So, lawyer's profession, again I say, is a noble profession. Why doctor's profession, architect's profession, chartered accountant's profession, all other professions are not a noble profession? Because it is only the lawyers who are considered to be the social engineers. It is always they who generated the peace at the time of generated the war at the time of peace. The war of wits. It is only by wit and wisdom that a society evolves to the higher levels. Therefore, all religions give much importance to acquisition of knowledge. That essentially happens in the profession of lawyers. Knowledge of everything, knowledge of medicine, knowledge of agriculture, knowledge of trade, calling, business, occupation, profession, knowledge of science of running a government, knowledge of science and technology, knowledge of other branches like art, fine art, performing arts, every branch of knowledge a lawyer is associated. The first one is he should strive for knowledge. Julius Stone, the famous author of Legal Systems and Lawyers Reasoning, he says, it is only the lawyer's profession, occupation, which is placed at the pivotal level in any civilized society. For three reasons. He gives three, assigns three reasons. The first one is, this is one occupation which essentially makes the professional to go for higher learning, acquisition of knowledge, wisdom and virtue. Other professions also need that, a doctor's profession. But he can work out the contours of the area, maybe blurred counter contours, but there will be contours which our occupation does not admit. Today, one will come with a matrimonial cause. Therefore, you are supposed to know how the family as a social institution functions, the spouses, the relationship with the parents-in-law, brothers-in-law, sisters-in-law, children, grandparents of this process. So many aspects. Why friction begins? Unless you know this, you will not be in a position to conduct that case at all. Then the tenant, tenant comes. You should know about a good landlord, bad landlord, good tenant, bad tenant. Only then you will be in a position to render justice to the consumers, not otherwise. A government servant comes saying that I have been demoted. 
fight my case. Unless you know how government functions, what is the role of employees of the government, how that differs from other employments, you will not be in a position to argue that case. A peasant comes to your office, a farmer, an agriculturist comes, saying Banking, bank people are troubling me, they are forcing me to repay the debts. Unless you know the difficulty of peasantry, the difficulty of agriculture, you will not be in a position to argue his case at all. Therefore, the first ethic of this occupation is you should strive for acquisition of knowledge. And it is not an act. It is a continuous process, unceasing process, which all the scriptures of all religions strive the college library till 9 p.m. And the person who asked this question was Nani Palkiwala. Who argued famous five cases? One is I.C. Golaknath versus State of Punjab, 1965 Supreme Court, 66 Supreme Court, where Justice K. Subarao, the Chief Justice of India, the 11 Judges Bench said. The fundamental rights are unamendable. The word amendment found in Article 368 of the Constitution, read with 13 of the Constitution, does not include Part 3 of the Constitution. How that great proposition was laid before the Supreme Court. Then, 1973, before that 1970, 71, R.C. Cooper versus Union of India, relating to nationalization of 14 banks, there again the subject matter was the scope of amendment. 73 Supreme Court. Keshwananda Bharati was a state of Kerala. The celebrated judgment just which uh, Professor Upendra Bakshi called as the future constitution of this country. One truck load of books were filed in the Supreme Court. One truck load. And the Supreme Court in a bench of 13 judges, unprecedented. Never 13 judges met except for the review in that one case. The, it was divided, 6 is to uh, 7 is to 6. And the Supreme Court said, what are the basic features of the Constitution? They said, democracy, republicanism, periodical elections are one of the basic features. That is how the country came to be saved during emergency and after emergency, where efforts were made to elongate the period of the parliament by 25 years with the same representatives and the legal opinion given by Attorney General Niren Day was that no, such an amendment you cannot bring in, Keshwananda will come. It will come in the way. One decision where Palkiwala argued with all his intellectual might and one man could save this country. How it happens? by knowledge. So, 
the first ethic of our profession is acquisition of knowledge. It is not just information. The T.S. Eliot, the Victorian poet, wrote one stanza in his poem, The Rock. Where is the life we have lost in living? Where is the knowledge we have lost in information? Where is the wisdom we have lost in knowledge? Where is the knowledge we have lost in information? And where is the justice we have lost in loss? So, it is not just acquiring information. You will become best of the librarians if you can find the information. That information should graduate to the level of knowledge. The knowledge should graduate to the level of wisdom. You are highly knowledgeable in electrical engineering, but you do not know how to put the fuse, how to replace a burnt bulb. What is fun in having that information, useless information? Therefore, you should try to strive to acquire knowledge, convert that knowledge into, translate that knowledge into wisdom. That is another. The second ethic is being organized. You should be organized. We should be organized. Dr. Ambedkar used to have three mantras. Educate, agitate and organize. A, E, A, O. Educate, agitate and organize. Unless you organize yourself, your productivity comes down. If you are not prepared with the case papers, with the rulings, with a particular mental plane to Go on with the matter before a particular judge and the opponents will be here, uh, that side. You have to organize everything. American legal history records some cases which were lost because one citation was lacking. One ruling is not brought to the court and court passes the judgment against, which otherwise would have won, gone this side, it went that side. I remember a small poem which I read long, long ago during my school days. I do not remember the title. The memory is playing trick with me. <coughs> it read, For the want of a nail, a horseshoe was lost. For the want of a horseshoe, a horse was lost. For the want of a horse, a soldier was lost. And for want of the soldier, a battle was lost. See, the victory depended upon the nail. Nail is such a small thing. Is it not? That means you have to give due attention to every minute detail, every minute thing. What see the how? The uh, history, legal history of this country is sometimes mesmerizes me. Two words. What is law? What is amendment? These two words decided the fate of election of a prime minister of this country, Indira Nehru Gandhi versus Rajana Rai. These two words are responsible for retention of democracy, a democratic quality in this country. These two words placed the limitation on unbridled power which the parliament wanted to arrogate to itself. Only these two words. Therefore, you should be very, very meticulously organized. The third one, why our profession alone is a noble profession. Others are not ignoble. 
but they are not called as noble profession like ours, unlike ours. Because ours is a profession much different from the business. In business, money, generating money is the focal point. In profession, service is a focal point. Read Roman legal history, history of the decline and fall of Roman Empire by Gibbon, which professor used to tell us when he was a student. One of the reasons which Gibbon gave for fall of the Roman Empire was the professionals lost the professionalism. The Roman Empire which had reached the zenith in everything, it fell down. Not because of any war, nor because of any pestilence, nor because of any catastrophe, nor because of epidemic and endemic, but because the professionals lost the professionalism. Therefore, one marked difference between a business and an occupation, a profession, is the focal point. Roman lawyers, you have seen the lawyers wearing the gown. We have wipers to wipe our tears. We had a coach on the behind. Litigant would come. When the lawyer would walk in the morning, he will come from behind, put a penny from into that pouch from behind. The lawyer was not supposed to see who was putting the penny because his performance, the lawyer's performance should not depend upon what is paid to him. Even if some mud is put, he has to argue his case. He cannot differentiate the case on the basis of payment of fees. No, because behind every case, there is a person. A person is there, property is there, reputation is there. Any one of these three, person, property, or reputation, that should be argued without being influenced by what is the amount of fee he received. It was accruing as, the, as an incident of discharge of his professional duty. In Rome, lawyers were exempted from being arrested. No question of arrest of lawyers. Because Rome treated the lawyers, the institution of bar as the highest institution. Essential, as essential to defend the liberties of the citizens, to protect the, the citizens from other citizens, from within and from the king. They were the defenders of liberties, like the defenders of the frontiers. Cicero likened the lawyers to the soldiers, soldiers of civil liberties. The soldiers guard your frontiers. You guard the society itself. Read history of the world. Any development, any revolution is always headed by a lawyer or influenced by a lawyer. <laughs> Our own freedom struggle. See how many lawyers were there. Mahatma Gandhi was also a lawyer. So was Vallabhbhai Patel, Vithalbhai Patel, Dr. Ambedkar, Alladi, Gopal Swami Ayengar, Saifuddin Kitchen. Take the names. All their lawyers. See who represented the Indian delegation to Queen Victoria, 
again lawyers. See, English history, Jeremy Bentham, who used to work with the prince, and there were 207 offenses for which a death penalty was prescribed. Jeremy Bentham told the king, Oh, foolish king, you are under a wrong impression, as your forefathers were. If death penalty is prescribed, you are under an impression that there will be no crime. All right, let us go to the Sunday Mass. Jeremy Bentham and the king went to Sunday Mass in a disguise, where after the prayers were offered, in the gathering there used to be public hanging of criminals and theft was an offence for which death was punished, prescribed as the penalty. And some thieves were being hanged in the open. At that time, amongst the masses which gathered there, Jeremy went and pointed out to the king, O oh, king, O oh, unwise king, See, the gatherers, he is putting his hand into the pocket of another to steal the purse. And the tip is being hanged there. He is not bothered about it. Therefore, he pointed out the there, there should be classification of offenses and gradation of penalties. Because of that, in England, in the 18th century, 207 offences were attracting the death penalty, they came to be reduced to 11. Why? Because lawyers said like this to the king, king amended the law. So, you should be having the concern for the good of the society. Good of the society your service should be selfless service. The fourth one is courage. Without courage, nothing happens. You may be howsoever intelligent, brilliant, wise, virtuous. All that is meaningless unless you are courageous. Courage is essential. In good olden days, during Maratha regime, during Peshwas rule in Maharashtra, there was a village magistrate called Rama Shastri Prabhune. Read Legal History by Rama Joyce, Legal and Constitutional History by Justice Rama Joyce. He mentions this. When he was going for a walk, uh, evening walk, he saw a mother and a child, both being very lean and malnourished. He inquired with the mother, what has happened to you? What has happened to the child? And she said, my husband is at the frontiers and fighting the war. So what? No, my husband is not paid the salary. Then Prabhuna issued warrant to the military general to come before village magistrate and answer why you have not paid the salary to the soldier. Military general said, Peshwa has not sanctioned any money. All money is being spent on war. We are at the combat. Then Peshwa sent a notice to Peshwa, uh, uh, Prabhune sent notice to Peshwa, come and answer the charge. You are responsible for malnourishment of two important citizens of this kingdom. They are, they are, they are hungry. They are weak. They are meek. Peshwa did not come. He said, "A judge is under the king." As Lord Coke said, James and Williams, that judge is not under the king, but he is under the law. And Prabhune issued arrest warrant against the king. In his own kingdom, he is a judge, village judge, village magistrate. He sends an arrest warrant 
against the king because he did not appear before the court. See the enormity of courage. For the fall of a hat, we run away. See this. He antagonizes the king. King did not come. He said it is contempt of king. Then Prabhune said, here is a kingdom where the rule of law is not held high. And our Vedas say, a kingdom where the king does not tread the righteous path. An honest citizen should not see the sunset. He packed everything, came down to Janwar in Belgaum district and committed suicide. Because he saw the king this side was equally bad. See the virtue, see the courage. We had such a church during emergency. Before little before emergency, emergency was planned on 25 6, 1975. On 12 5, 1976, 75. Justice Jagmohan Lal Sinha of Allahabad High Court gave a historic verdict holding Prime Minister to have practiced corrupt practices during the election. That is the case which you read Indira Nehru Gandhi versus Rajanarayan, 1975 Supreme Court, SCC Supplement 1. A judge said, you are liable to be unseated. An ordinary church passes a verdict when whole complete society was terrorized under the clamp of emergency. One single judge gave a verdict and he only wrote the judgment by hand. He gave dictation of another judgment giving an impression that judgment will not be adverse to the powers that be. But he wrote the judgment by his hand, due to his sense. After sending his wife and children abroad, holding that Prime Minister is guilty. She shall not contest the election for a period of six years. Matter went to Supreme Court. Judgment was good. But reasoning was not that powerful. That's what Fali Nariman writes in his Before the Memory Fades. The judgment was most wanted, most hard. It was welcomed by the people of, uh, during that period. But the merits of the case, which should have been exhibited through the judgment, no, they were not. The Supreme Court stayed it. And the lawyer who argued was again Nani Palkiwala. But when